This is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to the next edition of Turning the Page. Um, this one is the M3 Grease Gun by Leroy Thompson. This is an Osprey book, and uh, as most people are familiar with Osprey books, are they're pretty consistent in their content and their formatting. Um, this one is um, about 80 pages, or exactly 80 pages. In the United States, this is going to retail list for $20. In the UK, it's £13, and in Canada, it's 24 On the back, it says, uh, introduced, excuse me, influenced by the German MP40 and the British Sten, the 45 caliber M3 grease gun served as the primary U.S. submachine gun for almost half century. Designed to replace the expensive, Thompson, the expensive Thompson SMG, the M3 was issued to airborne troops and others during World War II thanks to its compact design with sliding wire stock. An approved variant, the M3A1, was favored by armored crews right up to the beginning of the 1990s, seeing service in 1991's Desert Storm in Korea and in Vietnam. Reconnaissance troops and special operations forces were at times armed with the M3A1, also available in a suppressed version, and it was the first SMG issued to the U.S. counterterrorist unit Delta Force, featuring full-length artwork, first-hand accounts, and archive and close-up photos. This is in the engaging story of the M3 submachine gun. I did not know that it had that long of a history. I mean, looking at it in World War II format, obviously, it's very, very basic. I'm assuming that the gun kind of modernized in, over time. So, um, All right, so this one is by Leroy Johnson. Uh, series editor is Martin Pegler and illustrated by Adam Hook. Uh, you can see in the table of contents section we have the development, right, introduction obviously, the development, uh, cost, the functional cost-effective SMG, use, skepticism, then acceptance, impact, a long-lived SMG, conclusion, bibliography, and index. Uh, looks like it's going to be an interesting read in terms of just the, the history of the gun, because um, again it kind of seems like one of those, not, I mean everybody knows the, the gun, but I'm not sure everybody knows the history of the gun, so that is kind of an interesting aspect of it. Um, so, again, what you can expect in an Osprey book is a lot of text with a lot of uh, color, black and white photos, uh, illustrations, um, you know, tables, contents, things like, you know, things that all modelers want in terms of reference information if they're doing really, really detailed stuff. Um, so this um, is one uh, version of it, obviously, kind of looks almost like a Thompson there with the, with the way it's uh, the, the stock and the, and the front handle. Um, that's the more typical one I'm used to. But anyway, so we're going to go kind of flip through this real quick. Uh, goes and has an illustration here of some of the small uh, uh, cutaway breakdown details, some nice uh, close up photos there of the breach, um, and uh, you know, just lots of little details, uh, lots of little um, areas there. If you're, if you were, Doing one of these in, in larger scale format, um, maybe not 135th scale, but in some you know something uh, more uh, figure size scale, you probably this would be a great book to have for just uh, you know detail uh, illustrations there. Um, and again, I'm, I guess I'm kind of curious like where this goes in terms of the 90, 1991 issue model. Um, these are all World War II photos for the most part, if not Korea. That could be Korea, or that could, that could be Vietnam there, actually. Nope, U.S. Marines on Okinawa, World War II. Um, and then there, there we have, I uh, believe, yeah, that's in, uh, that's in um, Marine Brigade, Operation Jefferson. I'm going to guess that's Vietnam. Oh, yeah, Laos and Vietnam. All right, so, um, yeah. I mean, that's, there we go. I guess so, really, it didn't change all that much. It didn't change, really. I mean, it's still the same looking gun. Um, a nice shot there of uh, during August 1949, an SMG, an M3 SMG, is demonstrated to the members of the California High Patrol at Fort Ord, California. Boy, they had some nifty, uh, nifty uniforms back then. Actually, these are the military. I assume this is the Highway Patrol, but, uh, but yeah. And um, so we can see, just basically goes through, and then the technical influence. There's, I think they're showing it kind of, maybe was an influence for the Uzis. Uh, which kind of makes sense, I guess. And, um, yep, goes through all the way to the end. Oh, there we go. And also the influence for the, the, um, the Colt SMG. Is that what that is? That doesn't look like a Colt SMG. That's, um, 
that's a that's a that's a, 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 a yeah. I don't know what that is. I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to to tell me in the comment section. I mean, it looked more like a more common weapon, um, like an M4 or something. What is that? It says the Colt nine millimeter SMG with an aim point optical sight. Well, that looks like an aim point. Um, two two three Colt Commando. I, why have I never seen that gun before? Odd. I play a lot of uh, you know. Uh, Survival games like DayZ and stuff, so yeah, I've, I've definitely uh, come in contact with a lot of computer weapons in terms of stuff that's in, are in, there in games. Well, thanks to Osprey for sending us um, this uh, this reference book, and uh, take a look for it. It's definitely been out for a little while now, um, and you'll I'm sure you'll find it. Um, please leave your comments, suggestions, questions below, and we will see you next time on Turning the Page. Mm -hmm.